Well, good morning. It's uh, it's the last day of November, so it's a little bit chilly, as you can imagine. I'm wrapped up nice and warm. You can probably tell by all the leaves on the ground now, it's very much a, a wintry scene now. I'm here today at Lindome Lakes. I've literally got about two and a half, three hours. So I'm going to take the opportunity to just fish with bomb and pellet simple as that that's what i'm going to do but i'm going to do it on beaches i've never really heard of anyone catching many fish on on beaches like fishing like that but it's a very very simple way of fishing i've got a nice simple bomb set up i've just got some six mil pellets and that's it well you haven't got much wind or anything to contend with today it's flat calm but i'm sure if we get the approach right i'm sure we're going to be catching a few fish it is midweek so there aren't loads and loads of anglers here that are doing some fishery management over there we're on the willows so you will hear possibly a bit of noise in the background from chainsaws and things but i don't think that's going to affect things this is strip lake here and that there is loco and this is where we are today as you can see it's flat calm it's not too wide here i don't know what the width is it's probably a good 25 meters or so i've just got one rod set up as you can see and this is permanent peg three about five minutes ago, I fired 10 pellets out there towards that other bank. I'm going to be fishing about two meters off that other bank. Obviously, if I've got to go a little bit nearer, I will do. I have seen, just seen two carp, well, I say carp, they could be in F1s, really close to that other bank, really close, which is interesting. So I think there's one or two fish moving about. So I've fed 10 pellets, that's all. And I'm just going to keep flicking three or four pellets over the top with a nice little light bomb. And uh, even if we don't catch straight away, I'm sure we're going to be seeing line bites and indications of fish moving about. The bait tray couldn't really be much simpler. I've got some 6 mil fishery hard pellets. I've got a few more in my bag, but I don't think we'll need many for this short session. Nice soft catapult, because I'm not catapulting out too far. I've got a selection of hard pellets there if I want them. There's some 8s in there, different coloured pellets, just for the, just for the to, to try on the band. I have got some band and wafters there to try because they can sometimes pick out fish they're the mini sorry the micro ones and then rod wise just a nice light nine foot rod that's all we need we're bomb fishing and a lovely 3000 reel that is it really really nice simple setup so i'm just going to kick off with a hard banded pellet just a six mil exactly the same six mil as what we're actually what I'm actually loose feeding. Why not? That is what they're used to, well, hopefully they're used to eating and what they're used to seeing. So I'm not gonna clip up, so I'm just me guesstimating each cast. I'll make sure that drag's undone. Um, so I've only fed 10 pellets. I'm just gonna flick about four more in, just a couple of meters off that other bank. There we go. And let's see if there's anything there waiting for us. Right, just past them that. Get that rod down on the rest. And that's it. I'm sure, even if we're not catching anything, if there's any milling about, I'm sure we're going to see the... We'll be seeing the... Um, seeing liners from fish moving around, I'm sure. I'm not fighting any wind today, it's flat calm isn't it, so it is only shallow there, probably three foot I think, something like that, but um, just had an indication there, straight away, uh, I'm not too concerned about sinking the line or anything special at, the, at this stage, I think, be oh, there we go, <laughs> straight away, and that was without even tightening up, brilliant, absolutely brilliant, I mean it's probably 15 minutes now since I, I fed those first 10 pellets, it's, it's quite a chilly day, but it's, you know, it, it could be a lot worse than this. So by winter conditions, it, I suppose it could be classed as quite mild, as it were. But straight away, as you saw, it was only in there less than a minute. Let's see what it is. I'm not quite sure what we might catch today. I know there are F1s and lots of carp in here as well. But I don't know if it's more about carp. Well, it is a carp, that one. Not a massive fish, but as you can see... How about that for a start? Brilliant! And what I am going to do is, just before we unhook him and keep him in the water, I'm just going to fire a few pellets, another four pellets, just to set up the next one, if there is going to be another one. 
let's have a look at him. Well, fantastic start. A fine wire, sorry, a fine mesh net today, just because it's a little bit kinder, kinder to your, uh, you can see, kinder to your, to your hair rigs. Look at that, brilliant start. Well, there was no mistaking the bike, was there? Off you go, mate. Not got to keep that in for this short session. It's not great actually watching that bomb down, to be honest, because of the um, the trees and everything. I can't actually see the bomb in flight to to judge <laughs> how far off that other bank it is. But I think after a few casts, you'll just get the feel for it. That I mean, that range I'm casting there must be about only about 15 meters, something like that. And that's why a nine foot rod's ideal for this, isn't it? I'm just gonna fire some over the top this time. Another four pellets. No doubt we're gonna get the attentions of the ducks, I think. We've got a coot over there now. I don't, hopefully it's not gonna start diving. He's definitely taking an interest in those pellets. The last thing we want is, uh, is for that to start diving down in this shallow water, because that will disturb any fish that might be there. I'm not gonna tighten right up to it. I'm gonna leave it a little bit slack. If I, if I did want to get a feel if there was some fish there, you know, if I weren't, wasn't catching or anything, you can tighten your, tighten up to your tip and that will, that will highlight any sort of little indications, any liners of fish milling around. But any sort, see that was an indication there. But as you saw on that last one, you know, when you're fishing a hair rig like this, it's a self-hooking way of fishing. When the fish hooks that, uh, sucks the pellet in, the hook goes into the fish's mouth and it, the fish is on so that's why you get bites that they're not really bites as such because they're already hooked or they should already be hooked so it's just a fish bolting out of the swim another thing i'm also going to do as well because it's so shallow it's flat calm it is you know going much colder now the, the water's colder and everything just to give it give us another option i'm also going to fire some pellets down this left hand margin so where that reed bed is there i'm going to fire some pellets just in front of that reed bed so that's going to give me another option you know there aren't any other anglers there and it's you know it's a long way from there so what we can do is just keep firing a few pellets exactly the same as we're doing over there but i'm going to do it in front of those reed beds maybe not quite as far away as that a little bit a little bit nearer there we go and that's just going to be a really nice quiet area that i can keep dropping onto if this line goes quiet as you can see that coot is already diving on those pellets i've only, only literally just put them in and his diet look he's diving on them so that's not going to be an ideal scenario is it but as long as he's not diving on that line so all i'll do is i'll wait i'll time feeding that line to when that coot isn't there when he's not looking that that's when i'll feed it so i'll feed that line much much uh, less frequently I'm getting a few indications and things, but certainly nothing like that first bite that we had. What I'll do is I'm just going to give it another five or ten minutes on this line. If um, if obviously we manage to find a few fish, then that's great, or they suddenly seem to um, come onto the pellets. If that happens, that's great. I'll just keep doing what I'm doing. If not, I'll just start inching my way further across to that other bank. And all the time, all the time, I'm keeping my eye out for that coot because when it's not there, like it's not at the moment, that tip's just gone straight round, one's gone. Well, that's dropped on the back of one. I'm just gonna feed that while the coot isn't looking. I'm getting indications there straight away on that. That could be on. I'm just gonna wait and make sure, because it might have gone over the back of one. I think that's on. It is. <laughs> Great. Well, that's encouraging. I just think they need... This might be a different species, this one. Just... Oh, I pulled off it. So maybe, I don't know, maybe it was far looked. I don't know. But it was definitely a fish. So let's go back out again. Back on that same spot. Just gone a little, tiny little bit closer to that other bank. I mean, that time I really left it, the tip was going, just to <laughs> try and make sure it was on, and we definitely hooked something, whether it was hooked in the mouth or not. Just straighten that line a little bit. But quite often this time of year, you know, it can be, can take a while to get the fish going anyway, you know, it can be, it goes really cold at night. So 
So I'm just going to keep four pellets at a time going in. I don't want to feed too tight to that other bank, even if we've got to go right across. I don't want to feed, see that was a fish just really close to that other bank further up there. There we go, that one's on. I don't want to feed too close to that other bank because if I'm feeding there, this fish crashing all the way up that other bank, if I'm feeding really close to the other bank, then the fish can stay near, near the other bank in order to get the pellets, and ideally I want them to come away a little bit. As you saw, this one went round pretty quickly. It wasn't any long at all. I've got a 30 centimetre hook length. There's a bit of a drop for the pellet to fall. If they're picking these fish off as they're actually falling through the water. Is it an F1 this one? Looks like it. Still active for the time of year. Come on mate, that's it. They're a nice stamped fish aren't they? Just looked in the corner of its mouth as you can see. Fantastic. <laughs> Beautiful fish aren't they any time of year you know. So hard fighting. And so exciting to catch when, when they're hooking themselves on, on a bomb setup like that. It's, it's great to, to, to catch fish like that. It's just really exciting when they almost pull the rod in. So take that hook out. Beautiful. Let's pop him back. So I'm just going to keep, just keep doing what we're doing. So this time I'm not going to feed first. So obviously it means there's only my pellet going to be there this time. When they see the two plops of the bomb and the pellet, just as though two pellets have been loose fed. I'll just give that a few seconds, and if we don't get anything I'll just put four over the top again. I'm going to feed that near side line as well, while the coot is absent. Just keep some pellets going in there, nice little quiet area there, it's really really quiet, no disturbance. Really interesting that when I leave it, I don't seem to get anything. So what I'm going to do is, before I cast back in, I'm going to put four pellets in, which is what they're used to going in. Let's just uh, get rid of those four pellets. And then we'll cast over the top of them. Just give them a moment to go down, because all the bites will come quick, as soon as the rig's gone in. Let's see if that happens this time. It's as though if you don't get a bite in the first 30 seconds or so, you don't get a bite, which is interesting for this time of year. That one looks like it's on. Yes, well this feels a bit better, a bit slower this one. Left that one in a little bit longer that time. I honestly think if you just leave it and leave it and leave it, I think eventually it will go, but this one's kiting to the left a little bit, this one. Let's turn that one round. I think if we leave it and leave it and leave it, it will go eventually, but um, I, I strongly suspect that there's more fish there milling about than, what we're at, than, what, um, than what's been indicated with, with the indications on the tip. So after this one, I'm going to clip it up and just inch my way across that other bank because I think they might be a little bit more confident over there. And then uh, once we've exhausted that route, we'll catch what we can do in that. It's going to be interesting to have a cast down this left hand side just to see what's down there and see if they are a different species. There you go. It's another F1, that one. Beautiful looking fish. A lot of them are a similar size to what we've been catching today. That one, again, everyone's been right in that corner, hasn't it? How ironic is that? Everyone has been in that corner of the mouth. So let's just get him unhooked. Got our pellet back again. Let's pop him back. Off you go, mate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cast in now and then put a line clip on and just start working our way further across. I'm going to change that pellet just because that one looks like it's been out there a long, long time. Sometimes that's what people, the look that people go for. I, you know, that is a discussion we've had lots before. You know, a pellet that looks like it might have been in the water for a long time might be a little bit more attractive or seem as though it's less risky to take it and eat it than a, a fresh a fresh pellet, if that makes sense. But that is a, a theory that lots of people go by. Put that on there, it's the same spot as before. So if we don't get one on this cast, what I'll do is I'll, um, I'll show you. I'll basically just 
peel a little bit more line off and then put the line clip on so then I can I know that I'm a little bit closer to that other bank. And keep firing a few of those pellets in, just four at a time. I won't feed any more than that for now. And while the coat's not there, not looking, we'll feed that inside. There we go. That looked like a liner then, but we've pulled into it. I'm still not sure if this is upright, to be absolutely honest with you. <laughs> if it is foul looks, it was certainly a positive hookup. Like I said, I'm fishing with a slight line anyway. You know, I don't want to see every tiny little indication. I'd, if I've got a tight line between my tip and, and the bomb, then that's when fish can get hung up. Whereas if you leave it slack, your line has obviously got a tendency to, uh, no, it is hooked okay. Your line has got um, a tendency to, to, to lay on the bottom out out the way where fish can't quite get caught up as easy. That's, that's you know, we fish like that a lot of the time with the method as well. So good fish. So that little move, I mean that last cast was a little bit nearer to the bank, but this time I'm gonna, I'm gonna do it a little bit more systematically now, just so we know exactly what we're doing. Pop that one back. It definitely seems like they're a little bit more confident that little bit further, further across. So I'm gonna do that to a line clip now and see if uh, the closer we get, see if the more confident that the fish are. Let's start going closer. I'm gonna put my line clip on now. Tighten that up. We'll start going closer now. Let's just see if it makes a difference to our quick. I mean, we're catching fish anyway, but we're having to wait quite a while for them. So by moving across, let's just see if, uh, see if it increases the, um, the speed that we're actually catching. Be interesting just to try it out. Keep them pellets going in. There's bound to be one or two fish down this left hand margin when, he, when we go on that line. Must be really nice and quiet there and that coot's disappeared as well now. I haven't seen it for a while since that initial since that initial uh, Diving session where it had over that first lot of pellets that I put it. There we go. That's a fish. That's on That's good. We're, all, we're on a line clip now as well. So obviously I haven't got my drag set Right, I'm obviously sat here keeping my eye on the rod anyway. This feels a much smaller fish this one could be different I hope what we got here An eyed is it maybe? And lots and lots of eyed in here Or a roach or it could be anything. Let's have a look Oh, silver fish Whatever it is Get that beauty I'm sure you can catch anything on pellets these days, can't you, on these commercials? These uh, pellets and things, they are the natural baits for these fish. So we're on the line clip. So now when I cast in, it's gonna be in a nice straight line, the rig and everything. And it means I'm not, uh, I'm not gonna be worried about Hitting that far bank, I can just go straight to the clip. Well, it's first ca cast nearer, and we've ended up with a silverfish. What I didn't expect. Got to be careful not to feed too close to that other bank, but if we are clipped up, it's not going to be an issue because obviously there's no danger of getting caught on that other bank if you with a, with a line clip. That one's on. Yes. Definitely better nearer to that other bank. We've still got about another metre to go before uh, we, you know, we really start getting close to the actual features themselves, but it's definitely evident and quite obvious that they're much more confident. This feels a decent fish as well. Much more confident nearer that other bank, even though it's really, really shallow. But even in the depths of winter, even when the water clarity starts to go clearer, you know, the fish often still tend to hang near features like that. That's a better fish. Yeah, 
Yeah, that's a heavier fish, that one. Again, we're still on the same 6mm pellet. Hooked at that same corner again. Corner of the mouth. As you can see, everyone's been in virtually the same spot. Still got loads of energy left in him, this one. But having that line clip on and going near a set of the banks definitely, definitely sped up how quick we're actually catching fish now. They're definitely much more confident near, near that other bank. Well, moving across nearer to that other bank has definitely made a difference. The bites are coming much quicker and the stamp of fish is a little bit bigger as well, which is interesting. But what I'm going to do is, it's been, it's been a while now since I've started uh, feeding that left hand. It's not really a margin line, but that left hand swim in front of those reeds. So I'm dying to have a try just to see if there are any fish there and to see if the, the fish are of a different stamp. So I'm going to just use exactly the same rod, everything. All right, same rod, same rig, same hard banded pellet and just put it in front. Just read that, that's a little bit too far. Just read it back a little bit. There we go. I'll just move the, the feeder arm over to, uh, to the right a little bit more, just so I've got a better angle on it. And again, I'm not going to tighten up to it too much because I think any, any bites that we get or, any, or anything, they're obviously just going to take the rod, I think. That's what I think anyway. But it's been a while since I started feeding that line and it's been lovely, nice and quiet down there. Every fish I've hooked out there hasn't gone anywhere near that area because I played them all in this bit here. So all the disturbance has been here. So it still looks the ideal spot. I'm not going to feed it while I'm fishing it because there's been enough bait gone in there for any fish there to be to be there and, uh, and feeding confidently. But I'm going to keep that far bank line fed. I want to keep that line alive. Based on what we've seen across there, I'm surprised that that hasn't gone already, to be honest. It's not too close to the bank. I think you'd class it really as a margin swim. Because you might think that that's still too early in the day for the margin to produce. But, it, I mean, it's got to be a good two and a half, three metres away from the bank. And it is in front of those reeds. And it's been really quiet down there. So I'll be amazed if it doesn't go yet. But if it doesn't... I'll just come off it, refeed it again, and then go back out onto that line out there, which I'm pretty confident that we'll get one straight away when we go back out there once it's had a rest. But it'll be nice to catch on this line first. Well, I've had three casts now down that side, and I haven't had a single bite. I had two little indications, liners. I can't believe that's not materialized. But that line now over there has had a good five minutes to, to rest. I'm sure we're going to catch on that first time. And I'm going to keep on feeding this left hand margin, but I'm amazed we haven't caught down there. But I'm sure there's going to be one waiting out there for us when we go back across there. Get ready for this to go straight round. Famous last words. Is, is that on? Is that a liner? Drop back, let's have him. Oh, it's thrown towards me. Turn up to him. Yes. Well, it was in about a minute or so. And uh, looks like the rest has got us one. Is it a silver fish? Let's have a look. Looks like it is. That's a surprise again. Picked the bomb up and swam towards towards us and that's why it dropped back in fact i don't think it's up right is it let's have a look i don't think it is first skimmer of the day it's great to see so many fish so active now that it's getting cold i'm amazed we haven't caught anything in front of that reed bed just there it looks ideal but maybe if we stopped on to the end of the day end of the session when the light went we might catch down there but we've caught loads across there well i hope you've enjoyed sharing this short winter session with me if you have please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe if you want to see more videos from this channel so thanks for watching and i look forward to seeing you next time